perturbs the mind, then we see what the mind is out naked, undressed from the clothing of language and convention. That's why I've made this point over and over again. There cannot, there will not be a serious discussion of the origin of UFOs or, for that matter, of the nature of consciousness itself until we leave the utterly culture-bound, provincial, and hick-like attitude that science has foisted on us about perturbing the mind. Without the use of psychedelic substances, I think solving the UFO dilemma is going to be uh, as thankless a task as attempting to understand the nature of the universe without availing yourself of the use of a telescope. It is simply tying our hands behind our backs. Now, there is a third possibility, which is uh, the one that is the more commonly entertained notion, which is simply that we are being observed by intelligent life forms that evolve somewhere else in the galaxy. They have quarantined our planet to keep us from being agitated by their presence, and they will eventually uh, reveal themselves. I find this an extremely odious notion, especially the part about how much chaos there will be if the truth is ever revealed. This is nothing more than the reassertion of masculine paternalism, its right to keep secrets from the rest of us, its belief that there is a privileged all-male class of people who can be let in on what's really going on, and the rest of us, poor dears, have to be uh, shielded from these tremendously shocking facts. Uh, I discussed this once with an entity, and it said to me, well, you know, we've disguised ourselves as an extraterrestrial invasion so as to not alarm people with what's really going on. <laughs> We're getting close to the end, folks. Th there is a fourth possibility, which I mention only in the interests of thoroughness, which is... Uh, that these entities and their vehicles are not spacecraft at all, but are in some sense time craft, and that we may be the tremendous sense of empathy with these quite physically unusual beings may arise out of the fact that we're looking into the faces of our great, great, great grandchildren who may be emanating back through time, carrying the message a message about some sort of future event or situation that lies many centuries downstream from us, but that is of such import that from that point, agents are moving backward and possibly forward through time, spreading the news of some kind of mode shift. This doesn't seem to me to be impossible. However, based on my own experience, which is what I think this thing really comes down to, because what we have in the UFO issue is an official position supported by scientists, whether they be Neanderthal right-wingers or doctrinaire Marxists or whatever, a conspiracy of consensus against the uh, personal experiences of individual human beings who are told, well, what you're saying happened to you can't have happened. You are insane, you are mentally ill, you are mistaken. So what we really have here is a political issue. Which do you believe? Your, un, your uh, perceptions, memories, and expectations aided by your intellect? or some kind of utterly abstract, official, doctrinaire, sexist philosophy laid on from above. So I think really what the saucers do, if you accept their presence, is they empower us. They empower us to see science for the shell game 
that it is, to see the past 400 years of Western culture for the pathetic narrowing of the spectrum of allowable phenomena that it is,